In today's video, I am so excited because I have a Dollar Tree Christmas DIY that I know you're gonna love. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Okay friends, to start off this DIY, we are going to take these boxes from Dollar Tree. And these are the crates that I have used in many of my famous crate DIYs that I get from Dollar Tree. And I don't know if you see here, but you guys, Dollar Tree, I don't know what they're trying to pull. However, I just ordered a new box of these and the smaller ones was the ones that came. So I don't know if they changed the size up on us or what, but the new ones that I just got are smaller. So that is something to take into consideration. But anyway, putting this together, all I did was take these boxes and do two in the front. The next layer has four and then the next layer has six. So this is going to create kind of like a platform. Now, if you have something else that you can use underneath to prop your boxes up and glue together so that way they are glued together, you know, in three different um heights if you will then go ahead and do that however i didn't have anything on hand the only thing i had was the boxes to build it up so that is what i did um, and then for the side pieces i took three on each side of these boxes with the label holders in the front and glued two at the bottom one on the top making sure that I glued the labels in opposite directions so that these glued together nicely making sure that the labels are facing front once I glued them together with my hot glue then I took this mat from Dollar Tree I measured it out for the top of my side boxes and then cut those down to size I then set those aside and paint all of the tops of the side pieces with my white Waverly chalk paint, making sure that most of it is covered. I didn't worry about it too, too much because you're not gonna see that anyway, but I did want most of it covered that way if you could see anything through these mats, um, you would only see white and not the bottom of those boxes. I also painted those with my white Waverly chalk paint, dry brushed them with my uh, Waverly antique wax and my mini chip brush. And then once that was completely dry, I hot glued those to the top of each box. <laughs> I am so sorry, you guys. I guess I was talking way too much when I um, forgot to tell you that I spray painted this with this new Krylon. It's this new line. I've never seen it before, and I thought it was interesting. So I figured that I would try it. This is the Burnt Wood Spray. There are several different ones. This dries super quick, and it's very, very easy to use. I got it at my local Walmart, um, but I just took that outside spray painted it um it's two super easy steps you spray the first one that is like the coloring and then the second one blends it all together and there are tutorials online that you can watch and again directions on the box that i followed once that was completely dry i dry brushed that with my mini chip brush and some white waverly chalk paint set that aside and then i also um gave my side boxes a coat on the sides and the front with my Waverly Antique Wax. Once I wiped off the excess and I let that completely dry, I'm impatient, so I used my blow dryer to completely dry it. But if you are patient, um, then once yours is completely dry, then um, you're going to add the labels that I forgot to mention I took off so it was much easier to paint. And then I had these labels from Amazon and I went ahead and glued them to the front of my middle boxes. Now you could screw 
threw these in. I was going to do that. However, I realized that these are really thin boxes and I knew that I would have trouble getting my jars in and out if I screwed the label holders in. So I decided to glue those down. Once I was done gluing those down to the middle of each of the front of the middle boxes, then I went ahead and dry brushed around the entire of the side boxes. Now I was a little bit lazy and did not take the label holders off of those boxes. Once again, I should have done it while I had them off, but if you guys have been around, then you know sometimes I do things backwards. So don't be afraid, you guys. I get comments all the time that I'm like this amazing crafter, but you guys, I do stuff butt backwards and all kinds of stuff. So let me just tell you, do not be afraid to make mistakes because I can assure you I make plenty of them. And you're going to see here in this video in a little bit, a big mistake that I made and I just went ahead and fixed it. Was it annoying? Yes, but no big deal. So for these, I just cut down some pieces of um, wallpaper from Dollar Tree. I like to use the back because it's super thick and I just cut those down to size and added those into my label holders. I also put a little bit of glue underneath of them that way the pieces of paper would not fall out and then this is the coffee bar without anything on it or I should say hot chocolate bar and the reason I wanted to leave this neutral was because I figured it would be perfect to leave all year round to decorate for all the different seasons. Let me know which season you are most favorite to decorate yours with. Now, to make this thing what it is very easily, I take this chalk couture transfer, cut it up, and then take six of these wooden labels that I got from Dollar Tree and paint them with my ink Waverly chalk paint. Next, I took all of the little pieces that I wanted to label with, laid them down on my labels, and then went over them with my white chalk paste. And then you're gonna see the magic here, why I love Chalk Couture so much, you guys. You don't have to design anything on a computer. You don't have to wait for it to print out. It, that would have taken me so long just to label these. So I appreciate just being able to grab it, transfer it on, wash it and be good to go. You can find all of the products that I used down in the description box below as well as the pinned comment. You guys can always check there for any information and you can always text my number if you have any questions as well. I'll leave that up on the screen for you. But once I transferred all of those on and it was dry, then I just went around all of the labels with my white paint pen with little dots because you're going to see here in a minute that I have have something else that matches and I wanted it to all be cohesive. Now for the bigger labels, these are chalkable chips. I just drilled out a hole for each so that we could hang them. And then for the first one, I used another one of the little transfers that I had already used. You can get about two uses um, before you have to wash it if you're going to reuse it over and over. That's the beauty with these as well. They're reusable many, many times um, as long as you take care of them. So I transferred on the marshmallows and the chocolate from another transfer. I then transferred on the little dots around the wording once it was dry and set those aside. For the next little jar, I take this other jar from Dollar Tree and I take the label off the bottom by heating it heating it up with my blow dryer and then peeling that off. Now I wanted to transfer on this word sprinkles to that middle part but because there was like a raised edge around it for say a label um, I did have a little bit of bleeding but no big deal. Again that's another beauty with Chalk Couture. It's washable depending upon which surface so because this is glass you can either scrape it off super easy or wash it off. Now obviously I didn't want to wash it off because I wanted you to be able to read it. So all I did was take my multi-tool and just scratch it off so that you could clearly see that wording. And then I set that aside. Next, 
I'm going to transfer on the Please Help Yourself to a chalkable chip as well. You can also get these on my chalk site. Um, they are also washable and reusable. You can use them for so many different things. And because the Please Help Yourself was long ways, all I did was just transfer on Please Help, dry that, and then transfer on yourself right underneath. I also transferred on the dots around it after I washed it the first time. I glued my chalkable chip to the lid. And lastly, I made a simple bow with some baker's twine. I cut off the end so that it wasn't so long and glued that to the front. And that was it. And look how cute this turned out. If you guys are enjoying this video, don't forget to share this out and subscribe if you haven't already. I would love for you to become part of my crafty family. So for the big canisters and all of the jars, I ended up having six jars. Um, I use jars for a ton of stuff, so I have a bunch of jars in my stash. Dollar Tree also sells jars, so it's totally up to you, but I had all of this stuff. So I just pulled out two of my bigger ones and wrapped some baker's twine around the the edge of it or I don't even know what you want to call that neck I guess the neck of this jar and then I hot glued it in place I also took the chalkable chips that said marshmallows and chocolate and strung some of that baker's twine as well cut that and then glued that to around the sides of my bigger canisters I also made two simple bows and glued those to the top of the chalkable chips. And then that was it for these, you guys. So cute and easy. These are perfect for parties. I cannot believe that these big jars are from Dollar Tree. Um, definitely be on the hunt for those. I believe you can also order them from the website. I feel that these would be definitely worth ordering a whole case of because you can do so many different things with them. Let me know down in the comments which treat is your favorite. So because a hot chocolate bar or coffee bar, if you will, would not be complete without decor, I knew that I had to make a few little decor pieces. So I took this little jar from Dollar Tree, wrapped a piece of red ribbon around it and tied it, and then made a simple bow with this red and white buffalo check ribbon and tied that to the front. Next, I took just some little simple trees from Dollar Tree, glued the bigger one in the middle, and then three around the front and the sides of the white tree. Now these were a little bit tricky to get in get in here so i just did my best i used my cricut tweezers if i needed to to get those into place and then put the lid on i cut a little bit of greenery off of some christmas greenery that i had in my stash glue that to the sides of the bow and then painted the lid with two coats of my white waverly chalk paint making sure to dry in between coats and then once they were completely dry I dry brushed the entire lid with my Waverly wax last but not least I took this little pull that I have in my Amazon shop glued that to the top and literally you guys that was it for this little decor piece I wanted to put some fake snow in there but I couldn't find any in my stash but I personally love the way that it looks without it I also think it would look amazing with it so let me know in the comments do you think it would look better with or without the fake snow for the next DIY, I'm going to take this welcome sign from Dollar Tree that I got back at fall time and I'm going to take my transfer that I'm going to use, lay it on the sign and mark where I need to cut it. I then pulled out my self-healing cutting mat from Dollar Tree and my utility knife as well as my ruler from Cricut. It has a really nice sharp edge so when I'm cutting it's really nice to start out cutting with and then I just use a very sharp... Uh, that was a brand new blade and I only had to score it about four times, bend it and then cut it from the back, cut off the excess, sand that down and then give it a distress coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. Once it was completely dry, I fuzzed my transfer, meaning I just used my fuzzing cloth to put a little bit of fuzz on the back. That way when you pull it up, it's not gonna stick. And then transferred on the wording with my 
candy apple chalk paste and then the lines with my pesto paste again i will leave all of the products that i used down in one link it will go in a cart and you can add and subtract from that cart as you like if you guys want to know how to get 40 percent off just like i do text my number 302 2040881 the word chalk and I will get all that information over to you. You can also use that number to text me and say, hey, it is me answering you. You can text me for ketone information, how I just recently lost uh, 60 pounds in six months prior to this pregnancy which I'll be on that journey once I drop this baby. But anyway, you guys, you can text me for any reason, be a part of the text crew. I send out messages when I'm going live, when I have a sale, when I am putting up videos, like that number you can use for everything. Anything pertaining to me, you can use that number. It is my number. So anyway, you guys, I just built a frame for this. I dry brushed it, I built the frame and used my saw to cut it down, and then I stained the pieces with my antique wax. I also glued some Jenga blocks to each side on the back, that way I would have something to glue to, and then this is where I made a huge mistake. So I either cut the pieces wrong, yeah, I cut the pieces wrong, not either. I cut the pieces wrong and I had to go back, mark it, and cut that little bit off but again you guys no big deal I was super frustrated at first and I was like Melissa it's no big deal just cut off the end so sometimes we make situations way worse in our head than they really are I talk about this a lot on Facebook um, if you guys want to connect with me more definitely check me out on my socials TikTok, Instagram Facebook I literally am there every day on my stories like it's my personal life over there. So if you guys wanna check me out, all of my links are in my link tree. So once I had my frame put together with some hot glue, the Jenga blocks are gonna help you so that you have something to glue to. So I glued that together with some hot glue, like I said, and then once the frame was put together, then I dry brushed all the way around the frame with my white Waverly chalk paint. I made a simple bow with this ribbon that I got from Walmart in the crafting section. And then once my bow was glued down, then I just took some greenery, glued that to each side of the bow, and look how absolutely gorgeous this sign is. You guys, I love it so much. Share this video out with a friend if you think that they would enjoy this sign as much as we do. Last but not least, if you guys are still around, leave a snowflake in the comments or just say snowflake. Y'all are the real OGs, but this is not a Dollar Tree DIY, but I wanted to make a little sign for my cocoa bar. I almost called it a coffee bar again, and I did not have enough time to make a sign i could make something like this if you guys want to see that after i have the baby let me know down in the comments below i would love to show you how to make one of these signs but anyway i just use my transfer transfer that on with my shimmer paste as well as my white waverly or my white chalk paste and then once that was completely dry i made another bow to match the cocoa bar sign bow and then I glued that to the top with some greenery as well and that was it for that one you guys look how gorgeous this cocoa bar turned out you can change it out for the seasons like I said let me know in the comments which part of the cocoa bar is your favorite which treat is your favorite I love to hear from you guys in the comments I love chatting back and forth you guys are absolutely amazing also if you guys sent baby boy a gift thank you so 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 much i'm really really trying to um open them up on live for you guys but he's going to be born this week and i am like nesting and getting everything together i'm getting so excited you guys i cannot believe it is this week oh my goodness so anyway i love you guys i wanted to leave you with something really really great so let me know what you think of it if nobody has told you today, you're absolutely amazing. You're worthy. You literally can do 
anything you set your mind to. And I just want you to encourage you guys that you're amazing if nobody has told you. So with that being said, don't forget to text my number 302-204-0881 for any ketone or chalk or text crew information. Also, and don't forget to stop, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload. Or join the DIY fam here to your right.